My name is Dr. Paula Uroburo. I'm a uh, professor at Hofstra at Hoft University in the English department. I also teach courses in the film department and for a women's studies program. I also happen to be uh, the vice dean of the School of University Studies, which is one of our schools here. And uh, as a result of my book that came out last year, American Eve, uh, some people call me the dean of vice, so I'm willing to accept the, the burden of that title. Basically, um, my interests in, are in uh, both American literature, British literature, popular culture. Uh, I kind of specialize in turn of the century, the Gilded Age, the Gothic, the grotesque, uh, horror, science fiction. Um, in a sense, uh, my interests are very sort of, there's a range of interests there that I think uh, make me um, make me kind of a student of, of the history of a lot of things, including the history of film, photography, art, theater, and of course, literature. Right now I'm going to be reading a, a very brief selection from my book, American Eve. Uh, the full title is American Eve, Evelyn Nesbitt, Stanford White, The Birth of the It Girl and the Crime of the Century. And uh, let me just say, for those of you who may uh, question what the, the significance of the subtitle, the fact is that this is the murder, this is based on the murder case of Stanford White, who was the famous architect, shot in Madison Square Garden in 1906. Um, and it was the first crime of the century. I know there have been subsequent so-called crimes of the century, but this was the first one in the 20th century. Um, and Evelyn Nesbitt really was the first it girl, and as I like to say, she was the it girl before anybody knew what it was. So um, let me read you just a brief couple of uh, pa pages from the book. This is in the chapter which is entitled Benevolent Vampire, which was the term that Evelyn came to use to describe Sanford White, and this is her meeting with White the very first time. As if by magic, the worn narrow door in front of them opened automatically. To Evelyn, it was all delightfully mysterious, appearing to her like something out of one of the dime novels she had read back in Tarentum. The girls made their way up the stairs, at the head of which was another door, which opened in the same marvelous way. Intrigued, though beginning to have some qualms about what lay beyond the murkiness of the second stairway, Evelyn stopped halfway and asked, Where on earth are we going? Suddenly a disembodied voice boomed out of the shadows. Nowhere on earth, dearie. Evelyn shrank back, then hesitated, as a reassuring Edna nudged her with her elbow. It's all right, believe me, she whispered. The two were ushered into a room that Evelyn described in 1934. The sudden plunge from the dingy street entrance into this room was breathtaking. The predominating color was a wonderful red. Heavy red velvet curtains shut out all daylight. There was plenty of illumination, yet I could find no lights anywhere. Fine paintings hung on the walls. The furniture was Italian antique, beautifully carved. There was a table set for four. The great white stood to one side like an urban potentate, surveying his handiwork and amused by the reactions of the little dolly to his startling and innovative lighting effects. White's dramatically designed but camouflaged uplights revealed certain expensive objets d'art placed around the room with random artfulness. The indirect lighting threw a suffused rosy glow over the entire setting. The luxurious arabesque folds of floor-to-ceiling burgundy moiré drapes, overstuffed divans, upholstered in crushed crimson velvet, and oriental silk cushions and pillows, the color of claret and cinnamon thrown promiscuously around the room. Evelyn attempted to peer as nonchalant as her companion, but to little avail. She saw in an instant that the setting easily transcended the feeble-minded glamour attempted by the theater. The play struck her as something out of the Arabian Nights. She gazed at the scene again, half expecting the carpets to rise and fly around the room. She was less impressed, however, with her host. Uh, the book that I wrote, American Eve, is really about, I call, consider her the first celebrity. Uh, and by that I mean the modern definition of a celebrity, which is not necessarily somebody who has any definable talent. What happened was Evelyn Nesbitt was uh, a young girl who was astonishingly beautiful, who came to New York at the turn of the century to be a model, and ended up being at the center of this tr tremendous triangle, uh, I call it a perverse triangle, between two other men. One was Stanford White, the architect. The other was Harry Thaw, her demented millionaire husband. And what happened was the trial uh, that ensued after the murder of White by her husband led to a media frenzy that no one had ever seen before. It really was a, a, an example of firsts 
both in terms of she was sort of the first supermodel and then became uh, the star witness at what was really the first celebrity trial. You know, people had been murdered before, husbands had murdered uh, ex-lovers before, but no one ever of the statue of, of the Stanford White and Harry Thaw in terms of their power and money. And it gave rise to a number of firsts in terms of not only the legal system, but in terms of popular culture, in terms of, for example, um, you had the, it was the first time that uh, the term brainstorm was used to describe Harry Thaw's temporary insanity. It was the first time that you had a jury that was sequestered during the course of their deliberations. It was on the front page of the newspapers for literally two years uh, during the time that this trial, the first trial took place, and then there was a second trial. Um, so it really was this unprecedented sort of watershed moment in American cultural history. It was certainly, and the way I describe it in my book is, it was the end of the merchant aristocracy, that Evelyn Nesbitt, this little girl from, from the outskirts of Pittsburgh, ended up helping to sink the whole merchant aristocracy with her testimony about uh, the, uh, the relationship she had with Sanford White. Um, again, becoming a celebrity because of the popularity of, of her as a public figure, not necessarily for any talent she had, and that's why I think it's an important, um, important subject and certainly was, it really was a defining moment in American culture and the development towards what I would consider contemporary celebrity culture.